The same uncle I told you about that cut my hair. Yeah. yeah. Cut my hair the day of the video. I swear to God, edge up, cricket as fuck. It was like this. She say I'm hot. I just think I'm fine. Yeah. Have to go to East Texas just to find my. I swear to God, he fucked it up like horrible. I I I to this day still think he did it on purpose. What? Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Do you think your song was a part of the boogie movement era? Yeah, definitely. It I didn't think, have no dance. Uh, what yeah. that mean? Just because it wasn't no dance? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yours was straight at the next. Yeah, yeah. Caught a win and couldn't say nothing else. She told her homegirl. Home yeah, yeah, but you just because it wasn't no dance, it's still, it was still a... It was still a when I made it, that was the intention. Really? You know, I mean, my, you know, when I made it, the intention was to get everybody at Prayer View to dance to it. That whole jamming. So, jammin so that was my, that was the only intention I had. I ain't had no intention for nothing else other than maybe this would be good enough to where, you know, they play it at the parties. Wow. And and do you think the song calls? We had a I had a guy on here that talked about show show had have a song called No for Real. And, I, I love uh, that big homie show. Yeah, yeah, big homie show. And and my boy, uh, uh, Mister Hit, that said the song was so big that it was so big that it kind of like, like it was bigger than than you. You kind of got lost in the song and didn't even think about the artist to a point. To what he was saying. Do you feel like your song was just huge and because you had a big song, man? Yeah, yeah I'm bragging three plus six. UBS with every inch. Yeah, I think that that's the case too, but. At the same time, you know that's that's what you want. You yeah. want you want the music to be more than a face. You know what I mean? Like, fortunately for me, my song has lasted fifteen plus years. You know what I mean? You know where is I can have a great face. I can have you know <laughs> a black beard. You know whatever. And they still rock with it, and they still rock with it. So you know what I mean? I you know it's it's a gift and a curse. It's a double edged sword. How was it? The music video and just that time, like when you was going through all doing all of that. Run me back in the how was that Ooh, situation? Man, the same uncle I told you about that cut my hair. Yeah, he cut my hair the day of the video. I swear to God, edge up, cricket as fuck. It was like this. She say I'm hot. I just think I'm fine. Yeah. Have to go to East Texas just to find my. I swear to God, he fucked it up like horrible. I I I to this day still think he did it on purpose. What? I think he did it on purpose. I think he sabotaged me. I think he did it on purpose. I love him. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's my... The he, one you owe the money? Yeah, he's my favorite uncle. Like, raised me. Like, I act a lot like my... Like, 90% of my mannerisms are like put, him. You think he put you out there like I that, I think he sabotaged me. Come I, on, to my, man. I, I'm just telling you. Are I'm, you serious? I have to be... You know, I have to go to therapy, and I have to be honest mm -hmm. with myself. You know what I mean? And and you have to be honest about everything. And if you're not honest, then you, and you continue to lie to yourself, and then you keep battling the same depression so you have to be honest and you have to accept that you know that might have happened you know what i mean do you hear this <laughs> he's cut my hair <laughs> since i was 12 years old right since i was 12 okay at that point i was 22 never now the worst thing he'll do because he has really sharp blades like he'll leave like a little scar but it's a video so i can have a scar for a day you know what i mean because tomorrow when it whenever the scab comes or whatever the video is over so it doesn't matter i can i can make it 24 hours to do the video but i cannot make it if my edge up is like this it was fucked. it was literally like this up i swear to god stop man you gonna make us go back and look for you that can go video. look because mr boomtown and I, mr boomtown is so great that's how great mr boomtown is he went and called in some lady that do makeup and this lady that did makeup Fix that shit with the make. That's why makeup ladies deserve everything they get. Like every when they be on them sets also, and do that shit. we can't see it in the video. Then you can't. That's how cold she was. I wish I knew her name so I could like I give I, her I, roses. I, I, shit, I wish I could. I had called Boomtown. We had to go down a long laundry list because I he probably don't remember. But that lady that day saved the day. Cause had she not saved, they was gonna shut that bitch down. We wouldn't even go shoot the video that day. That's how fucked up it was. Hat couldn't save it. And, and you can't even see it with the hat. That's how fucked up it was. Wow. wow. But she came through with the with the blush and and and, and the pen. <laughs> I just really like that song was big and and during that time you got to think about it, man. We where the wave was on the West Coast really like, right? Well, at that time the uh, West Coast was banging no, at that no, time. No, 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 no. At that time it was a uh, it was really wide open cuz it was right after the snap movement.
So Snap had just so had, Atlanta was doing it. So so Atlanta had the Snap movement, but you and know, the black teeth. But but it kind of it kind of faded. and the white teeth. Yeah, it kind of faded. The Snap movement faded because of Gucci. I mean Gucci and Jeezy. You know, yeah, when yeah. Jeezy got hot, then everything went back to trapping. So you know, wasn't nobody really doing you know doing the Snap music and shit like that no more. You know what I mean? Until uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. What 2007, 2008, Jeezy dropped again. Yeah. So then for so from about 2008 to 2011 until well, I say 10 because I give you Walker. So about two, it was all Dallas. It was all Dallas Boogie, all that stuff. So. So I gotta ask you this question because this has been really um, getting annoying. I know we talked a little bit off air and stuff like that, but. Um, why is it? Because you've been in this profession for how long? 15. 15 years. So why is it that when celebrities get big mm -hmm. and they're going to go do promo runs, why do they never start in their hometown? Why do they never start in their region? As in like, you're from the South. Uh, why do they never start? Think, There's so many podcasters and radio stations here. Why would they go up West, North, all of those places before they even come back here? Oh, uh, well... It, okay, when you when you say that, you have to ask what label they're signed to. Okay. And then most of the time, the label has PR people or, you know, people that handle these things, and they just have relationships with... I mean, you have to think, New York is always going to be New York. It's the mm -hmm. Mecca. So everything there is always super important. Like, I just seen Sauce Walker had did the Breakfast Club. You know what I mean? Like, and so that's... A big step for him, you know what I mean. But Angie Martinez, uh, uh, Sway in the morning, uh, Ebro, all of these different things, you know what I'm saying? Because of the the reputation they built as a media market, it draws people to go there first, and then from that point, you know, people just kind of, you know how it is: New York, L.A., Miami, Chicago. People just kind of look at the big city. If you can make it in the big city, you can make it anywhere. More situation, but. That's why I was uh, telling my friend NK it was so important for us to come here because the audience that y'all have grown, you know what I'm saying, in the past three, four years has made it to where people that on the way to work, they listen to a Boss Talk podcast. Mm -hmm. People that are scrolling on Facebook, like I said, I get, I get OG Percy popping up. You know, I feel like every day, you know what I mean? Uh, y'all have embedded your, uh, yourselves into the the life algorithm of so many people that you know what i mean it's it's just as important as doing uh, a sway or angie or a uh, joe budden podcast or something like that i just think that a lot of times people want the recognition from other places and being recognized here isn't as important or in your hometown as important as it is in other places it's just perspective yeah, because even like when you talk about labels, because right now in today's society, you have a lot more people are independent mm -hmm. and doing their own thing rather than being signed to a label. But they still continue to do that as in to go abroad first, as in like further away. But see, even today, it's not a true independent. A lot of times it's a, like what, what used to be considered independent is what now major labels do. Because if you look at like what Empire does, Empire with and in, in 97, 98 would be considered independent. You know what I mean? But now they're like a big boy. You know what I mean? Everybody want to go to Empire or even what 300 does. Like they would be considered independents. But because of the way that everything has gone to streaming and different things like that with the music that independents can act like big boys and really kind of fool you. Just, you know, get in your way. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk.